Hello and welcome to MetLife Stadium. My name is Don Juan King, joined alongside Luca Yanuzzi here for the North Group 4 State Championship. And Luca, it's taken Hills a while to get here, but finally we've made it back to the State Championship. A long season, I mean, a lot of ups, some downs, but they made it here in the end. And I mean, took a while to get here, didn't it? Most certainly, but Hills put up an incredible performance throughout the season. Went 10-2, and two, only losses to two great teams being Tim Few and Utah, one of the best teams in the nation, and Ramapo, one of the best teams in the state. Well, you know, that's how Hills got here, but you also got to look at how Phillipsburg got here, and they had a pretty competitive streak too. They also went 10-2, and two, and they also lost to two pretty good teams. They lost to Union and they lost to Easton, and Easton was actually last week, so they're coming into this game on a loss. So, Luca, how do you think that's going to affect Phillipsburg and Hills coming to this game? Well, I must say, Hills definitely knowing that they've come in with a loss, know that they're going to be up ready, even more ready to get a win in this game. But they're not going to let that get in their way. They're going to be able to stop them. And Phillipsburg is saying to themselves, we've come off a loss. Now in this game, we should come off with a win. They got their heads hung high, and so does this Wayne Hills team. That should be a good matchup tonight. Absolutely, and you know, some of the differences between these two teams is that Phillipsburg has a consistently decent offense, but a very good defense, and Hills has a show-stopping offense and a very good defense, and you know, either team can come away with this win, and I mean, you could make a fairly good argument for either of these teams to really come away today. Both teams pretty much equal on all aspects, just incredible teams who it definitely shows that their skill has got them here. Just an incredible setup of these both teams. Yeah, and you know, talking to some of the players before coming to this game, such as Charles Njoku, Connor Tarpey, and a couple others here and there, the consensus about the players is they're very excited for this game. They've beaten a lot of good teams to get here, and they feel that they deserve this, and they really want this win, especially the seniors. I know you got a chance to talk to Coach Demikoff. What do you have to say? Well, Demikoff was saying, this game could be a higher scoring game, but it all comes down to speed. If it's quick to get those scores, Hills can have a better chance and use their run to get through this Phillipsburg defense. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I'm definitely thinking for this game is that it's going to come down to two different elements of the game. And it's very simple. It's called the first half and the second half. You know, Hills normally, in a classic Hills game, which we saw against Old Japan, is that a little bit of struggle in the first half, but then in the second half, they come out and they really show that they can pretty much beat almost any team so long as they can plan for it. And really, I think that's gonna come into play here. I think that Phillipsburg is going to have some slight advantage in the beginning of the game in the first half at least. And then I think Hills is gonna come back swinging. I think they have a chance to take this game over. I couldn't agree with you more. Me and you have consistently been saying Hills is more of a second half team as they have majority of their points for the season on average scored in the third and fourth quarters and in the playoffs as well. And as one of our other uh, broadcasters likes to say, a little bit of a shout out to Matthew Cassidy, but the train, this train has no brakes and we're about to see if Hills can keep that going. We will see you when the game begins. Hello and welcome back to MetLife Stadium. The game will surely be underway. And you can take a look at both crowds here and you can see both Phillipsburg and Hills are absolutely getting into this game. This is looking to be a great game, Luca. I don't know about you, but I have a really good feeling. I mean, me too, absolutely. This is a game at MetLife Stadium. Both teams definitely deserve to be here. They wouldn't be here if they didn't. And both these incredible teams ready to put out an incredible game. Now, Luca, this is going a little bit back in your history, but is this your first state championship or no? It is. It is. Wow. Well, my first state championship was freshman year, where unfortunately we lost. 
However, my sophomore year, we came back and we won against Wayne Valley in a game that went all the way until overtime in an amazing game with one of the greatest endings I've ever seen. But now, three time in four years, Hills has been in MetLife and the game will be underway. It's a low kick up to the left side, was touch. It's finally gonna get picked up, wrapped up by what looks to be the 36 yard line. The Phillipsburg offense will be on the field first and the Wayne Hills defense will start it out for the Hill side. Now Luca, talking about the Hills defense, what do they need to do to shut down this, Phillip, this Phillipsburg team? Well, we know this Phillipsburg team ha has an incredible defense, but their offense is great too. This defense just needs to stay on top of things and get, it, get around and get in this Phillipsburg offense's heads. That's Jack Staggered in the pocket. It's a quick throw out to the right side. He'll get taken down quickly, setting up a second and nine. Actually sets up a second and six, and six. Jack Stagger taking the ball yet again, throws it out to the right side, able to make a clean catch. A very nice reception, that'll set up a first down. And that looked very covered to me, but receiver just was able to go up and grab it. Yeah, that's running back Sterling Walker Sutton at six feet tall, was able to get, get through that and Despite all the coverage, he was able to get his hands up and make the catch. Staggered. Motion, takes it. Doesn't hand it off, keeps it for himself down the right side. He's able to break away. He's got a route to run. Taken down by Adam Abita down the right side. And that's Jack Staggered just finding a hole. Able to create some open space and is able to get down the field. And Jack Stagger is actually one of the better quarterbacks in northern New Jersey. It'll be a competitive game for Hills to shut him out. Takes the ball in the pocket. Toss out to the left side. Able to break past one defender. Gets taken down. Was able to juke past Daniel Daly. Will move the ball yet again. Not a first down, but looks to be a second and two. Scratch that second and three, but right now all it is is Phillipsburg just marching down the field almost effortlessly. Motion. Takes the, takes the ball, tries to rush up himself. Gets taken down though. Behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be Joe Ronnie, number 61. Third down and four. And great awareness by the defensive line to be able to swarm the open hole and shut down Jack right before he was able to make a pretty long rush there. He had the potential. We could definitely see potential there, but Joe Rondi, incredible awareness as well as all of this defensive line, as you said before, is able to get the stop. Motion, takes a snap. Looking down the left side, fires it. It's caught! Right before it touches the ground, it is sweeped up. That'll be a first down around the third yard line. And just like that, Phillipsburg is in an amazing position to score. And pretty much almost all through the air, besides one really good rush, by Staggered, but besides that, all it's pretty much been is just a showcase of how this kid has got a cannon. I mean, it definitely does show 2,200 yards passing and 22 touchdowns. 
Second into the pocket, motion. Takes a snap, doesn't hand it off, keeps it for himself. Tosses it out and gets a touchdown. And the defense was just not able to provide that much coverage on that side. And Staggard was just able to find the right angle and was able to neatly just toss it in for a touchdown. I mean, just a perfect hole, a perfect opening for that pass and able to get the completion into the end zone. Here's the kick. It is good. Phillipsburg goes up seven to nothing. But now we'll see the Hills offense coming onto the field and let's see if they're able to put a dent and put some points on the board for Hills. Now one thing I do wanna really point out is that this early in the game and you're coming out and you're putting up an offensive performance like that, that's Really impressive for almost, I mean, any team to do against Hills. I mean, we really don't see that happen much, but to get through that fast in just over three minutes, it's incredible to do. The only comparison I would really make it to would be Morris Knowles in the wing T when we first went into that game where they were able to drive down the field and score a touchdown early into that game. But after that, they were not able to do anything else. But even though Phillipsburg was able to pretty much create the same impact, they did it in a much different way. And this is really going to be a problem for Hills. If they can't shut out that offense, who knows what's really going to happen. Here's the kickoff. Najoku takes it, jukes past one defender, tries to get away from a second, but is taken down around the 28-yard line. And now, we will see the Wayne Hills offense coming onto the field. And we both know that they have plenty of weapons to throw to and even to run with. But let's see what Hills is going to start out with tonight. Well, we have so many options. We have some a great, great wide receivers. We have a running back core. An incredible offense overall. Sharky in the pocket, motion. Hands it off to Jaron Hayek. He's running down the right side. It's going to be driven back. It's going to gain a decent amount of yardage before being driven back, but a decent play call gets a decent amount of yards. Sets up on the second and five. Let's see what Hills is going to come out with here. And now, Michael Joyce coming on the field as the running back. Hayek and Christian punt a little out to the right. Najoku loan out to the left. There's the snap, handoff to Joyce. Who gets smothered on an inside run. Only picks up a yard, setting up a third and fourth. And so now it's a third and four. Let's see if Hills is able to get a first down. Actually looks like Hayek is in at quarterback. Motion with Sharkey. Hayek takes a snap. He runs it himself. It's down <laughs> the right side. He's got, got a there. wide open lane down the right side. And Hayek scores an amazing touchdown off the Wildcat formation. That is incredible. Now that's what you're talking about when you talk about offensive weapons. You cannot get better than that. That is incredible. We saw Jaron Hayek as quarterback last year. Now that we have Tom Sharkey, he was moved back to wide receiver as a primary position. But with that wildcat play, it threw them off and he was able to get through and run into the end zone. What an incredible play. 
An incredible blocking, too. That play would not have happened without that. Here's the kick. It is up, and it is good. Hills will tie the game up 7-7. Seven to seven. And two times in a row now, we see both teams' offenses coming on the field and scoring a touchdown. And early in this game, it's looking to be an offensive showcase. That's incredible. Coach Demikoff was saying it. It's going to be a high-scoring game, but it all comes down to speed. Not necessarily as much as they can score, but how fast they can score, how much. And you know, you look at the play and you look at what happened, and the Phillipsburg linebacker on the left side decided to move to the interior, while the defensive end on their right side was running outside to try to cut off Jaron Hick from running outside, but that left a gap wide open on their left side and Hayek just bolted through the gap and was able with so much speed to just break away for a touchdown and that's that once in a lifetime play or at least once in a game play but now the Phillipsburg offense will be coming back onto the field as Hills will be kicking this ball away Here's the kick. A low roller. It keeps rolling. He touched the ball. Can Hills take him down in time? They do not. He's able to break away for a couple more yards. He's got some blockers. Is he able to get down the field for a touchdown? He is not. He's going to get tackled by Charles Njoku. What could have turned? Into Hills' fortune turned into Hills' nightmare. I mean, just incredible. Like, so much happened there. And just Hills end up, ended up losing it. And Nasir Ball able to pick it up and run it down to about the 35, their own 35 yard line. Taking the ball, running it down the middle himself. He's got a gap. Break some tackles here, gets a nice spin move, and down the right side is able to get a first down. And that's Jack Staggered yet again, and two drives in a row, it looks like Hills just does not, currently at least, have an answer to him. Staggered in in the pocket. Motion, takes the snap, doesn't hand it off, throw it to the right side. Not able to break away, will get taken down for what looks to be only a yard. Taken down by Christian Puntalillo. And that's a play that Phillipsburg has called, I believe around three to four times now. So, looks like Hills might have adjusted to that play, but let's see what else Hills has adjusted to. Motion, Stagger taking the ball, looking for a pass. Breaks away down the middle, is able to break away from some tacklers. Gets taken down around the third yard line. And Hills just cannot stop Staggered from running down the field. Joe Montanez, number six, coming in. Mike Casasanta, number seven, coming out. Takes the ball, looking for a pass, throws it. Tipped up in the air. Nobody's come down with it. It looks to be an interception. It is. Hills comes away with an interception. And actually, it looks like it's going to be overturned or the refs are going to talk it over. Pass is for 
And no, the refs are going to keep it. And it will go down as an interception for Hills. And that's Gabe Delachai, number 56, on the interception. And so now this is two games in a row where he's had a major impact. Where last game he had an amazing sack. And really locked that game up for Hills. And now comes in early in this game and has an interception. And now Sharkey, handing the ball off, is going to get stuffed up. Doesn't look like he's going to gain anything here, but going back to Gabe Delachai. In the past two games, he's really stepped up. Yeah. Don't see him as much on the field, but when he does come on the field, you usually do hear his name. He's always part of those big plays. And Especially in these last two games, like you said, he's had an incredibly large impact. Sharkey in the pocket, takes a snap, looking for a pass. Throws it out to Jaron Hake, who catches it down the field, tries to break away. Thrown out of bounds, but that's going to be a first down, Patriots. And now it's Hills on their way, marching down the field. Let's see what kind of production Sharkey can put in today. I mean, we've seen him pretty early so far. And a very nice pass there, but let's see what he can do downfield. Sharkey takes a snap, hands it off, trying to break through. Gain of what looks to be one. Set up a second and nine. And now Hills is looking to move further down the field. Sharkey takes a snap. Doesn't hand it off, looking for a pass. Throws it away, very smart move there by Sharkey. He was had pressure all over him. Decided to not take the sack and just throw it away. He was lucky to even be able to get the ball thrown away there. It's surrounded by pressure at, on all premises. Christian Puntalillo and Jaron Hayek out to the left side. Charles Njoku all alone on the right side. Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass. Ties to run it himself. Will get taken down for a loss of yards. And Hills looks to punt it away. And you know, the one thing I want to point out that's a little bit different from the past couple of games we've seen is in Charles Njoku. For the past, I'd say about three games, he's been in double, if anything, triple coverage. This game, one man. And even with one man, there's really only been one pass to him. Here's the punt. Almost blocked. It's going to take a good roll here. Will be picked up around the 23-yard line. And so now Phillipsburg will 
be coming back onto the field and Jack staggered. Just almost unstoppable, at least from what looks in this game, besides the one interception from the tip. But Hills really needs to put something together to really shut this guy down. It actually looks like a different formation. A handoff here and looks to be a gain of about three. Actually tackled by Anthony Puntalillo. Staggered into the pocket, motion. Takes a snap, doesn't hand it off. Throws it down left side, wrapped up. Good tackle there by Jaron Hayek. We'll set up the third and five. Now if Hills plays their card right, they could get a third and out stop. Just like with what Phillipsburg did to them earlier. But so far, this is gonna be a very tight, close game. And a pretty great one at that. Staggered, looking for a pass, throws it. Wide left, incomplete, and that'll be a fourth and five. And the punt team for Phillipsburg will be coming on. Fourth and five. Go as on to the And just like that, a three and out, and the Hills defense really has stepped up. There's the snap, it's dropped, and it's tipped! Now it was touched by Hills. It was touched by Hills. But it will go to Hills anyway. And now the Hills offense coming onto the field in a very, very good field position. It was Connor Tarpey who bought that one down. And also, great job by the special teams to be able to get that pump blocked and have Tarpey take it down. Well, it was just Tarpey being situationally aware. That's what you need as a good player. And I mean, it was fumbled and Tarpey was there. And there's the jump. And that'll set up a first and five for Hills. Of, of the encroachment penalty. And so right after A dropped punt that ended up going in Hills' favor. They immediately, Phillipsburg immediately causes a penalty that loses them five yards. Now it's Sharkey in on the snap, looking for a pass. Up to Najoku. He's got it! Excellent catch by Charles Najoku. Going up to only where he can get it. Excellent touchdown to put Hills in the lead. Now Jordan Thiel on for the kick. And it's up and good. Hills will go up 14 to seven. And Hills in the first quarter is looking really good. I mean, 
and being able to get those two touchdowns definitely pulling ahead and being able to stop Phillipsburg as many times as they have and also with the special teams being able to recover that ball. Every aspect of this Wayne Hills team has been impressive throughout this first quarter and hopefully are looking to stay that way throughout this game. Well, I mean, you look at the touchdown reception and you just see Charles Njoku go up for it and he was able to drag the feet with it. Just like any other excellent college player would, just like any other pro NFL player would, just able to keep the feet in bounds with the catch and score an excellent touchdown. Jordan Thiel will send this ball away. Taken up down the right side. Has an open lane and gets sent out of bounds around the 39 yard line. Forty three seconds to go in the first quarter, and Hills is on top. But Phillipsburg does have a chance to react. And last time they were on the field, it was a third and out. Now let's see if Hills can recreate some of that previous drive. Takes the snap, looking for a pass. Has a man tackled immediately by Mike Casasanta. That'll set up a second and eight. Twelve seconds of counting. Staggered. Hands it off. Down the right side. Almost able to break away. We'll get the first down, but not a lot after that. Matt Patel, Al Perry. Went down by Vita. And that'll be the first quarter. Hills up 14 to 7. So, looking back at that first quarter, I would say definitely surpassing absolutely my expectations. I mean, I'll be completely honest here. I expected Phillipsburg to come out and pretty much for this score to be reversed. I expected them to be more consistent on offense. Even with all the targets that we have, I still thought that Phillipsburg would be able to come out here and put up a lot of points on the board. Well, instead, that it is the first quarter. Yeah, and instead, it's Hills that's able to really come away with a pretty dominant showing right now. And now with the start of the second quarter, takes a snap. Doesn't end it off, keeps it for himself, but gets swamped by the Wayne Hills defensive line. Jack Stagger, the ball carrier. Joe Rumpley, attack. No gain, second and ten. And it's pretty much just been the Wayne Hills defense really coming on and showing up and showing out. Scratch the first drive. And this is pretty much a copy of Morris Knowles. Pretty much by the book is looking for a pass. Has a man. Taken down just before the first down marker. 
And that'll set up a third and five. And Hills looking to get another th three and out. Hills performing great so far throughout throughout this game. And definitely, like you were saying, I was expecting Phillipsburg to pull ahead, and now Hills to be coming back. Takes a snap, looking for a pass. Not able to hold on to it. That'll set up a fourth and five. I'm sorry, a fourth and four. It actually looks like the offense for Phillipsburg will stay on the field. They will not be punting this ball away. Takes a snap, looking for a pass. Wait, what? I'm sorry. What? What? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I've never seen a... I'm stunned. I'm sorry. I am completely stunned. I'm just as stunned as you are, man. What in the world? What just happened? Did... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just saw the Phillipsburg offense go from a normal play to punting it away. I, I saw the same thing. Well, Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass down the field. A lot of rushers able to dish it out to Hayek, who's able to turn up for some yards. And Sharkey just able to avoid all of that pressure. And able to set up a first down. Excellent connection there by Sharkey and Hayek. But let's rewind a little bit. I'm still shocked at that. I did not expect that in the slightest. I'm speechless. I mean, I've seen the Patriots do that, but they have their Tom Brady punts it, but not formed like that. Sharkey takes the snap, hands it off, doesn't, throws it out to Jaron Hayek, who's got a blocker, gets tripped up. Was still able to dive for a first down, and that'll move the sticks, but I could have sworn. I really could have put money on it that Phillipsburg was going to go for it. Their special teams unit did not come on the field, and we just see staggered. Look for a pass, and then just drop it and punt it. <laughs> I've never seen that before. What? I mean, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted. Like, was that a fake? I, I we guess. have safeties. <laughs> Sharky takes a snap, looking for a pass. Doesn't have any blockers. And will get sacked for a loss of yards. And Hills will be set up at the 50-yard line, setting up a second and 20, but... Hill's line just... Just unfortunately breaking down there, allowing the sack. And now Hills comes out in a five wide formation. Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass, runs out to avoid the pressure. It's gonna get taken down yet again. That'll be the second sack in two plays. Doesn't lose any yards here. We'll set up a second, or I'm sorry, a third and 20, but. That's twice now that the pressure has gotten to Hayek, and he tried to scramble out there to his credit, but just was not able to make it. The pressure, pressure usually doesn't get to him that bad, but. Line just dropped the ball in those last two plays. Motion. Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass. A lot of pressure, gets tipped, but Charles Ojuku picks it up anyway. Is he able to get the first down? 
Does not look like he is, just a couple yards short. Very unfortunate there, but. Great job by Najoku either way to just get there right in time. Great job the punt staying incredibly aware there. Sorry to cut you off. But the punt team will come on for Hills now. And they will send this ball away. DR Genio on the punt. It's low. A bad snap. He picks it up himself. He's got to run it. Taken down at the 50. And a low snap will end up with the ball being spotted on the 50, even though with a good punt, it could have ended up well within the 20. Even though he is a uh, running back on the JV team, still he could have punted that and it would have definitely gotten farther. And now the flags come out against Phillipsburg. Too many of their players across the foul line. Won't lose any yards yet, but. Sagard takes a snap, looking for a pass. It's a screen. Daniel Daly not able to wrap up on the tackle. Will get taken down. Gain of what looks to be about three. Actually two will set up a second and eight. And an injury on the field for Phillipsburg. Looks to be an injury around the knee. And so far, even with some stumbles here and there, and that's happened pretty recently, Phillipsburg had almost the same amount of errors as Hills, at least so far in this game, but Hills still on top. Yeah. Both teams able to pull through the mistakes, which some of them, including this one most recently, could be helped. Some couldn't, though. But still, they've powered through. But Hills, like you said, still on top, performing just a, just a bit better. But I know as well as they do, they can still do better than that. Well, that's number eight in a sear ball coming off for Phillipsburg. Could not walk fully under his own power. So most likely, I don't think he will be returning to this game unless his injury gets suddenly better. But now it's staggered in the pocket. Looking for a pass. Has a man open. Will get the first down. And just like that, Phillipsburg is moving back down the field. Motion, staggered, takes a snap, looking for a pass. Needs to avoid the pressure. It's gonna take it himself and gain a couple yards. We'll set up a second and two. Actually looks to be a second and five. Bensi Polgar coming off now, being replaced by Gabe Delachai. Staggered under center. 
takes the snap, throw it to the left side, gets a first down yet again. And Phillipsburg now is consistently moving the ball down the field. So Hills had answers, and now Phillipsburg is just almost reverting back to the way that we saw them back in the first drive, and they're just coming back and are able to move the ball efficiently now. Staggered, takes the snap, hands it off, gets stuffed, ball comes out! Was able to recover. We'll make it second and six. And now Joe Montanez coming onto the field. But Hills needs to get a stop here. Takes a snap, hands it off. Almost stuffed, running out to the right side, has some blockers. Gets a first down, taken down by Christian Puntalillo. And now, Phillipsburg at the 10-yard line. Very good position to score. Staggered, takes a snap, hands it off. Gets wrapped up. That's Joe Rondi on the tackle. That'll set up a second and 10. Phillipsburg with three more chances to score. Motion. Takes the snap. Doesn't hand it off. Keeps it. A lot of pressure tipped by Jaron Hayek, who denied the pass. Will set up a third and ten. I mean, Jaron Hayek may be very well known for his offense, but we see... He can play a great defense, too. Well, absolutely. I don't think anybody's ever denied that. I mean, we've seen Jaron Hayek really step up throughout the season, not only as a receiver, but as a defender as well. Timeout, Phillipsburg. And Phillipsburg will call a timeout. Three minutes, 49 seconds left on the clock. The score is still 14 to 7. Hills in the lead. And now Hills with just one more stop might be able to shut out Phillipsburg to force them to go through for the field goal. They might just go for it on fourth down, but they might just settle for the field goal to at least bring their score up to 10. But who knows? They could go for a lot of things right now. They have a lot of options. And hopefully they just don't come out with another one of those fake punts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying that they're going to come out with the field goal because, like you said, with the try on fourth down, there's more risk behind it. But with the field goal, you're close enough where if you get it scored, you're at least getting your score higher. I still don't get the fake punt, though. <laughs> still right don't here. get it. <laughs> Staggered. Takes a snap. Rolls out to the left side, looking for a pass. Throws it. Caught. Is it in bounds? It is. And that'll be a Phillipsburg touchdown. Making Phillipsburg just one extra point away from tying up this game.
Here's the extra point attempt. It is good. And Phillipsburg will tie up the game 14 to 14. And just like that, we're back to an even ball game. I mean, this is how I expected it to be. I expected it to be back and forth throughout pretty much the entirety of the game until there's that one team that has that two touchdown lead. And it's my prediction for the game. Wayne Hill's up 35 to 21. You know, sometimes I find it funny when, you know, some of the other teams are cheering, especially this game. And I'll tell you why. It's because one of their Phillipsburg chants is maroon and white. But we are also maroon and white, so they're cheering for both teams. <laughs> uh. I mean, hey, if they'd like to cheer for us, absolutely. All they got to keep doing is saying maroon and white. So that's our team fair and square. And not a great kick here. We'll get wrapped up. But it is picked up by Phillipsburg. They will recover their own kick. As Michael Joyce and Jojo Mangeli collide. And neither of them are able to wrap it up. I thought Jojo had it for a while. But that slip up could cost them the game if they're not very careful. I mean, that's ridiculous. You cannot have that happen. I've been saying it since day one. Communication is key. You need to communicate. If you don't communicate, it doesn't matter if you do good. You're not going to do good enough. There's a snap. Hands it off to the fullback. Just barely able to gain a yard. And now the Felixburg crowd insulting the Wayne Hills team. Not sure how sportsman like that is, but we'll see. Takes a snap. Doesn't hand it off. Looking for a pass. Gets a lot of pressure. And is caught. Taken down by Adam Abito. That'll set up a first down. And Hills was not able to get there fast enough with the sack. They had staggered, but he was just able to get the pass off just in time. Staggered, takes a snap, hands it off. Down the right side, gets wrapped up by Daniel Daly. And that'll set up a second and 10. And now it's Hills looking to get the defense rolling once again. Staggered. Takes a snap. Quick throw. Almost wrapped up by Justin Forbooth. Does he get taken down before the first down marker? Looks like it does. It'll be a third and three. And all Hills needs to do is just bend, but not break. They need to prevent the touchdown. 
Staggered. Takes the snap, rushes it himself. Was he able to rush for the first down? And looks like he did get a slight break away. But was that enough? I don't think it was, and it wasn't. It'll be a fourth and one. And most likely, they'll keep the offense on the field. There will be a timeout. And that'll be Phil for his second timeout with 36 seconds left in the second quarter. Phillipsburg and Hills both tied at 14. And Hills is just in a bend and don't break situation. If they can prevent the touchdown, that'll set them up very nicely. And at the same time, if Phillipsburg goes for a field goal, sure, it'll put them up in the short term. But if Hills is able to go down the field and get a touchdown, then they'll be ahead. So all Hills needs to do is either prevent the touchdown throw that they could do. Phillipsburg has shown that they can throw it in these situations and rush it. But Hills just needs to play smart and prevent this from happening. And there will be the flags. It'll be an encroachment penalty. And that'll set up Phillipsburg on the first yard line. Or I'm sorry, the second yard line. Phillipsburg takes a snap, hands it off. They're not able to get it in. It will turn over on downs. Joe Rondi with the tackle there, but Phillipsburg will use their final timeout with 29 seconds left on the clock. Very smart move by them because either way, if they lost position of the ball, Hills is on the two yard line. And if Phillipsburg sends their linebackers along with their defensive line, they might be able to catch Tom Sharkey in the backfield. I mean, you never, you never know until you see it, but that most certainly could happen. Of course, something we don't want to see, but something we would want to see is being able to get out of this because, correct me if I'm wrong, Hills gets the ball back still after the, after the first half ends. Here's what Hills needs to do. You don't need to score in this situation, and in fact, you shouldn't be trying to score. You should be trying to get out of this position as fast as possible. Like, this is not a position you want to be in. And in this situation, all they need to do is get out of their own end zone Prevent a safety and actually <laughs> looks like it will set up a first down and actually Phillipsburg will be on the play and they're rushing towards the right side. Does he get the touchdown? He does. And actually I believe that's our mistake. Actually looks like it reverted to a first down off the penalty. That's our mistake. <laughs> Huge mistake there by us. But either way, Phillipsburg is able to score. Put even more points on the board and will take the lead heading towards the end of the second half or the first half. There's the snap, the kick. It is good. And Phillipsburg will go up 21 to 14 with 21 seconds left in the first half. So this has turned into a really competitive game. Phillipsburg may have the lead, but for a while, Hills had it. And now if you're Hills, main thing you want to do is just get into the locker room, 
and game plan for the second half. I think that's the best and ideal way to have this happen. I couldn't agree with you more. Just getting in the locker room and going over what you need to do coming into the second half to try and get back the lead if we don't in the final 21 seconds of this first half and come back out here stronger than ever and get pounding on this Phillipsburg team. Now, one thing that we have seen, though, is that Jaron Hicks' returning ability is just as good as his play in every other position he plays in. Let's see if he might be able to actually cause something here. Charles Njoku will pick it up. Has some blockers. Tries to juke away, but will get wrapped up at the 22-yard line. 16 seconds left. And now if you're Hills, all you want to do is run that clock out and get into the locker room. Either that or make some crazy insane play that ends up turning into a touchdown or some insane yards. One or the other, as Hills does have all three of their timeouts. I mean, we have seen attempts for that before. And Sharky will just take the snap and kneel. They will run out the rest of this game and... That will be the end of the first half of football here at MetLife Stadium. The score currently, Phillipsburg 21, Wayne Hills 14. And so we saw Phillipsburg come out strong in the beginning. We saw Hills equalize and then Hills take the lead. And then the last couple minutes of the second quarter, we saw Phillipsburg take the lead. What does Hills need to do in order to come back and then take the lead in the third quarter? Well, I say they pretty much need to go in that locker room and go over ev everything that they could clean up and clean that up. Mainly defensive plays and offensive plays that they can get around that they weren't able to get around in this first half. And now that they're getting used to this Phillipsburg team, as we haven't played them before, we've, pl we've gone through this just one half of football. And I'd say now this Wayne Hills team is getting used to how they're playing. So now they are they have a better way to get around this Phillipsburg team and are able to stop them. Well, I mean, that's only the hope that pretty much everybody at Hills has. But if you're Phillipsburg, you really want this momentum to keep going. You know, you just scored. You keep this going into the into the next half, and really, you could come away with a win here if you're Phillipsburg, but that'll be all for now, and we will see you once the game commences. Yeah. 
yes, yes.
Hello and welcome back to what is to be the final half of football played this season for Wayne Hills, including the last half of football that not only will these senior players be able to actively be a part of, but also the last half of football that I will be able to cover on this channel unless I come back from college. But for right now, this is it. All cards on the table. Hills needs to go all in. This is it. Man. Right now, Hills down 21 to 14. Came out of the first half with Phillipsburg scoring towards the very end. One in with the first score. Phillips, then Phillipsburg now taking over. But Hills now needs to do what Phillipsburg did at the end of the first half. Needs to come into this second half and start to take over. Absolutely, and I mean, there are a couple ways Hills can do it, but it starts out on defense. Hills needs to shut down the Phillipsburg quarterback, Jack Staggard. And as easy as that may sound, it's been a lot harder than Hills has anticipated in this game, but as we've said, Hills is a second half team. Let's see what they can come into the second half and perform as the offense will get the ball to start out the second half. The kick is high and long, taken by Anthony Puntalillo. And he will be taken out. And now the Hills offense coming on the field. They've scored 14 points so far in this game, but let's see if they can drive down the field, score some more points here. They have the weapons to do it. They just need to show the efficiency in it as Sharkey takes a snap, hands it off immediately. We'll get swamped. By we'll set up a second and ten. So nothing gained there. And you know, as much as Hills loves the rushing game, I don't think it's what you go with here. The passing game is shown to be just that little bit better. And Sharkey takes a snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to the left side, Throws it downfield. Hayek comes down with it. An amazing catch, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. And was he able to come down with it? No. It looks like it was incomplete. And Hayek caught it out of bounds. Unfortunate there. And, you know, looking at the replay, yeah, you see Hayek step out of bounds. One foot was in, the other foot was out. That won't cut it. So now it's third and ten. Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass. Runs it himself, throws it.
Little bit surprising there that the flag didn't come out for a possible pass interference call. But that'll be a fourth and out for Hills early. They will be punting this ball away. Low snap. Able to get the punt off. Caught and taken down around the 35 yard line. That actually looked like Daniel Daly on the punt and he was almost not able to get the punt off there. Would have been blocked, but had the awareness to make the quick step out right and send the ball flying. And so now the Phillipsburg offense will be coming on the field. I mean, if I had to make a comparison for this quarterback, I think it's absolutely an Aaron Rodgers type. Just a guy that can get it done and through the air, on the ground, and can just cause anything to happen. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to the right side, and tries to make a pass. Just through the arms of the receiver, pass will go incomplete. That'll be a second and ten. But even that pass there, even though Staggered had the pressure on him, was still able to keep composed and throw a pretty nice ball. If it was picked up, that would have gone for a lot of yards there. Staggered takes a snap, hands it off. Gain of about one. will set up the third and nine. Stop by Puntalillo. Stop by Puntalillo. Third and nine. Third and nine, Hill's looking for a stop here. Takes a snap, looking for a pass. Lot of pressure, throws it up. Out of bounds, and that'll be a fourth and nine. And a lot of pressure by Joe Rondi. Fourth down and nine. And Joe Rondi, he's had a pretty excellent game, I'm going to say. He's played very well. He has been playing great throughout the regular season. And in the playoffs, he's definitely been one of the superstars of this defense. Punt team on. A high punt. We'll take a bounce sideways. And picked up at the 34. Now again, I saw Jack Stagger out there with the punt. And that's more like what I what I said I've seen before with quarterback punts like that. They set it up like a punt team and just have the quarterback punt it back there. But with the potential of, if there is a way to do it, dropping a pass. But again, still with that fake punt, I can't wrap my head around it. Well, that actually wasn't a fake punt. That was more like just a safe punt, but takes a snap, looking for a pass. Keeps it for himself, able to run down the right side. S slams the defender down into the dirt. Tom Sharkey styling on the... Phillipsburg defense there. First down, Patriots. You know, Sharkey, the point of the quarterback is to avoid contact and injury, but he just dives straight into that one. And Sharkey takes a snap, doesn't hand it off, throws it to Jaron Hayek, who slips. That's complete the height. And there's the flag. Flag. 
flag over on the defensive side of the field. Dead ball, ball setting on sportsman legs. And it's an unsportsmanlike call. It'll be a second and seven. Christian Puntalillo and Jaron Hick out wide on the left. Najoku with only one man to beat on the right. Sharky takes a snap, doesn't hand it off, throws it to Jaron. Steps past one defender, muscling his way through a couple more, able to get a first down. That's typical Jaron Hayek. We just saw right there being able to bust through a good half dozen defenders at most and able to bust through all of them and get to the first down. Sharkey takes the snap. Looking for a pass. Has Najoku. Not able to come down with it. Incomplete. And now speaking of Njoku, he did have the amazing touchdown that put points early on the board for Hills. But he's been solo covered. He's got one man to beat who's playing deep man coverage. The one thing I would think of doing is sending Njoku on short curl routes and getting the ball to him. Sharky takes a snap looking for a pass. Throws one to Hayek. He's able to catch it. That's a first down. Steps out of bounds. With eight minutes, 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Ball will be set on the 27 yard line. Sharkey takes the snap, throws it deep to Njoku, one man to beat. He caught it! Did he move in bounds? He did! It's a Charles Njoku touchdown. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He's got one man to beat. He's got the height advantage. And it was just a matter of time before we saw him make another amazing play just like that. I mean, height advantage, I would say, is an understatement. 6'4", one of the tallest guys on this team. It's able to keep his hands over his coverage. Here's the extra point. Up, and it is good. Hills ties up the game at 21 points in the third quarter. And now the Hills defense will be coming back on the field to prevent the Phillipsburg offense from gaining the lead once again. So now the game tied 21 to 21. I mean, really, at this point, you got to think if Hills is able to shut out the Phillipsburg offense once again, they might be able to take the lead in this game again. And if they can maintain that lead, we can come out with a win. Just the only question is, how is Hills going to be able to do that in this situation? Deal with the kick. 
Low streamer down the left side. Some heavy hits, but the ball will be spotted around the 36 yard line. Scratch that 37 yard line. And the Hills defense comes back onto the field. Let's see if they can put up the same amount of production that they did last time. Staggered in the pocket. Takes a snap, looking for a pass. Down the middle. Instantly wrapped up by Adam Abita, but an open pass down the middle and that'll move the sticks. And an immediate first down response does not bode well for the Wayne Hills defense. First and 10. And a player from Phillipsburg is sent off. No flag, no foul. Was not forced out of the game. Just needed to get off, I guess. And Phillipsburg takes the snap, hands it off. Off the end around. Doesn't gain a lot of yards here. Will set up what looks to be a second and eight. Now, staggered in the pocket. Takes a snap, looking for a pass. A lot of pressure by Joe Rondi. Not able to get the sack. Throws it down the field. Overthrown. Incomplete. Joe Rondi almost had the sack. This game, it's been clear that Rondi on the defensive side has been dominant this entire game. Almost came away with another sack there. Stagger takes a snap, looking for a pass. A lot of pressure yet again. Over the top pass. Taken down. Did not get the first down though. And that'll set up a fourth and four. Fourth and four for the state line. Me out in a punt formation. There's the snap, the punt, and that is a pretty good punt. Will be picked up around the two yard line. Very good punt for Phillipsburg. Really bad punt for Hills as that'll set them up in a very dis disadvantageous field position. Um, take us in too. These punts have been coming from the quarterback of this Phillipsburg team, Jack Staggered. Yeah, and you know, that kind of worries me. And I'll tell you why. Because they send three men out wide every time. This is Phillipsburg. They send three men out wide. They could very easily and quickly fake that punt every time. There's the snap. It's a rush with Michael Joyce. The flag comes out. A 
And we'll see what the flag was for. It's on Hills. I'd hold it on the offense. I just did blind. Check it that. And so just like that, the Hills won't actually be moving back due to the penalty setting up another first down, so they will get a second down. It'll be second and eight. But now they have four yards to work with instead of two. Second and eight and four. Motion, takes a snap, runs it himself. It's Jaron Hayek up the middle. Was he able to get the first down? He was. And Jaron Hayek will move the sticks. Now it's Jaron Hayek yet again under center. Taking it himself yet again. Fighting for some yards. We'll get wrapped up. Gain of about two. And this has just been a very close game. Four minutes, 27 seconds left in the third quarter. And Hills just needs to really come out swinging and move down the field. Sharkey takes the snap, keeps it for himself, a lot of pressure, throws it away. A lot of pressure on Sharkey. We'll set up the third and seven. Could be a three and out for Hills. They might need to punt it if this doesn't work, but five wide. There's the jump. Dead ball, encroachment, defense. Still third down. And so with that penalty, Hills is now set up on third and second or third and two, but. Let's see what Hills goes with here. They could attempt to rush, gain two yards and a first down, or they could attempt to go over the heads of the defense. Let's see what happens. Sharkey takes it, hands it off, crowded. Did he get the first down? Did not, only a yard short. And the punt team will come on for Hills after what looked to be some of the Hills players disagreeing with it, wanting to go for it. In the end, it is the coach's decision. High snap, there's the punt. Pretty long but taken nicely. Getting past one defender. Brings it out to about the 20 yard line and will set Phillipsburg up in a position 
to take this game. I mean, a really good punt there, but an even better return by Sterling Walker Seton, number 33 for Phillips, are able to burst right through. Ball went right into his hands, and he ran right through the gap and got right through. He was only taken down because he stumbled. If he didn't have that stumble, he could have potentially went all the way into the end zone. And you know, now, Hills really needs to be worried, you know. There's the snap. Handoff down the middle. Able to rumble for a couple of yards. We'll set up a second and seven. Staggered, takes the snap, doesn't hand it off, throws it, caught, wrapped up by Daniel Daly, does not get a first down, but gets very close to it. And that'll be a third and two. Staggered in the pocket. Snaps. Hands it off yet again. Wrapped up by Gabe Delachai, number 56. Great stop by him. Having the interception in the beginning of the game and now Having a pretty good stop. But let's see what Phillipsburg is going to do here. Looks to be fourth and three, and looks like they're going to go for it. Motion. Takes a snap. Doesn't end off. Keeps it for himself, but gets wrapped up. Will not get the first down. It'll be a turnover on downs and Hills, their offense will come back on the field. Great effort there by the defense. Such a great effort to a point where Anthony Puntalillo lost his helmet. But man, an incredible job able to stop that. They saw it coming, knowing they were gonna go for it and they knew and they got right on top of them and were able to stop them. Now it's Sharkey in the pocket. Takes the snap. Keeps it for himself. Will run with it. Moves past defender, has some blockers, and will get taken down. Around the 34 yard line. Great job there by Sharkey. To rush for a ton of yards there. Twenty seconds left in the third quarter. Sharkey takes a snap, looking for a pass. Dinks it away to Adam Abita. Got a line. We'll get another first down. Four seconds left in the third quarter. And that will be the end of the third quarter. The score currently tied 21 to 21. But Hills has the ball coming into the start of the fourth quarter.
And I mean, Hills in two plays has gotten two first downs. This is their opportunity to score. I mean, there couldn't be a better time than this for this Wayne Hills team to score. Because once they get this score, the clock will be counting down its final minutes as we're in the fourth quarter. And it, it could seal them the lead and get them the win. Well, now the final quarter of football for the Wayne Hills season. Let's see if Hills can end it on a high note. But this is it. It all comes down to this one last quarter. Sharkey tries to draw the foul. Five wide, takes the snap, blitz. Hey, it comes down with it, able to spin away for some extra yards. And Sharkey, just a maniac, jumping right up in the middle of the field, even though he's covered, and still able to gain extra yards on it and sets up a second and one. An incredible spin move there to get him through with some extra yards. But again, like I, I was saying before, we're seeing typical Jaron Hayek covered by multiple defenders and still being able to push through. Now it's Hayek and a quarterback in the Wildcat formation. He'll take it, run up the middle, will get a first down and a couple more. And they've been using Hayek in at that quarterback position. And it's been working. Hayek is just able to find open space and gain a ton of yards. Ball set up at the 40 yard line. Sharky in the pocket. Takes the snap, looking for a pass. Throws it up to Najoku. Almost caught. Tipped off. Just not able to get up there. Sharky in the pocket. Takes the snap, looking for another pass. Tipped down. And just like that, it's now third and 10. And the Hills offense might be on their way out. And it looks like Hills has shifted away from the running game, mainly running five wide now, letting Sharky go through the air and Hayek on the ground, if anything. Sharky with the snap, throws it into Joku, a little curl route, able to step up, spins away! An amazing juke, he's able to break away and scores again his third touchdown of the game. That was sensational. What a move. And you know, I do gotta say, I said it earlier, he's solo covered, you run a curl route, you let him work his magic, and he will do things for your team. Look what happened. Curl route, worked his magic, touchdown, you can't ask for better. For the extra point, it is good. And the Hills will go up 28 to 21. In the fourth quarter, 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Even though you got to be happy that Hills is in the lead, there's still a lot of football to be played, and Hills cannot afford to get sloppy here as their defense is now coming back on the field.
The Hills kicking team coming out on the field. We'll send it away to Phillipsburg. Let's see what Hills can do. Sends it away. Picked up by Phillipsburg, wrapped up by Joe Martinez. And a mean tackle there. Flag comes out. But that was a mean throwdown by Martinez to bring his man down. And a holding call added on to Phillipsburg. That will move the ball back. And so Phillipsburg will actually get their start at the 19 yard line. Good field position for Hills. But let's see what they can do defensively to shut down this Phillipsburg offense. Staggered, takes the snap, looking for a pass. Lot of pressure, gets sacked, taken down. And that's big man, Bensie Polgar. And a mean sack coming from the left side. Completely unprotected, was not even looking in that direction and got slammed. Bensi Polgar, the big man himself. You don't hear his name as much, but you, when you hear his name, you know it's a big sack. Well, when you hear his name, you know it's a big play in general. But man, that was clutch right there. Takes the snap, looking for a pass, throws it. Has a man, tackled by Casa Santa. Won't get the first down. But now only three yards away from a first down. And if Hills can force a punt here, they'll be able to waste a lot of the clock and possibly swing this game even more in their favor. There's the snap, the throw tipped by Lundrum Nasufi. It'll be incomplete. And a great play by London and Sufi, the defensive end for Hills. And he's been a pretty steady guy for the Hills defense all season, always producing something, and that was his big Big production tonight. Phillipsburg punts it away. It's a high punt that will bounce backwards. Will be picked up around the 43 yard line. And now Hills has the opportunity to march down the field, score once again and make this a two touchdown game. Sharkey takes the snap, doesn't hand it off, chucks it downfield to Najoku. There's the flag for pass interference as Najoku was dragged down before he even had any sort of contact with the football at all. Definite pass interference. And that'll be a 15-yard penalty 
No, I mean, if you're Phillips, you just can't do that. He was nowhere close to that ball, and he was taken down already. And that's a momentum shifter in Hills' favor. That's really what you need to put this game away. Sharkey takes the snap, looking for a pass yet again. Straight out to Charles Njoku. He'll get tackled pretty heavily, but he'll hold on to that ball. We'll set up a second and five. And that's what Hills really needs. They don't want these really big flashy plays. As much as that play would have been amazing if Charles had caught it, but you know, the real showing will come through when they waste the clock, run this game out, and they win. But that's the hope. And that's the position Hills is in right now. So let's see if they can capitalize on that. Eight minutes, 13 seconds left on the clock. Hills in the lead. Sharkey takes a snap. Almost gets taken down under pressure. A flag comes out. Back on the play. And that's a face mask penalty on the defense. That's two penalties in a row that have cost them a lot of yards. And they're really beginning to add up here. And now Hills just inches closer and closer and closer to that end zone and really threatens to put another score on the board. There's the snap, the handoff. Able to break away, it's Adam Abita. He scores a touchdown. His first of the night. Breaks away from the pressure. Almost gets taken down. And is able to score when Hills really needed it. And now Hills with the extra point attempt. It is good. And Hills will go up 35 to 21. And you know, I do want to say, just to point this out now, some of us on the crew of the Wayne Hills television crew have made predictions for where this game was gonna end up. And I'm just saying, Hills has my score. I put them at 35, and Phillipsburg I put as 24. So if Phillipsburg can score a field goal, and Hills can waste the clock, I will have made my prediction. Well, this is my prediction right now. My prediction was Wayne Hills 25, Phillipsburg 21. That prediction right before the game. Um, even if Hills sets up that field goal, doesn't really matter to me to be honest, because at least Hills will be coming out of this game as North Group champions. Now hold on now, let's not call it too early. I made that mistake last year, and it's what ruined Dario Cerny's perfect field goal and extra point record. Let's not call it too early, okay? <laughs> Here's the kick. A low streamer right down the middle. Picked up by Phillipsburg. Has a lane. Taken down by Jaron Haig and Joe Montanez. Decent game. And I would like to say that uh, Hook Straits, uh, who was our teacher here and main director and the guy who gets everything ready and brought the camera here and all that. His prediction was way off. And <laughs> let's just say a number of 42 to 17. 
Just gonna say, that's a little bit further than what we actually got. Whereas we got a ball game, he was predicting a blowout, so... I'll take a good game over a blowout any day. So long as Hills wins. Clarifying that. Takes a snap. Runs it himself as a whole, but it gets taken down. Staggered on another good run there. Does he get the first down? Doesn't look like he does. And they're actually going to measure it out here. And yeah, the refs are going to come out here to measure the ball. Doesn't look like a first down to me, but Lundgren Nasufi is in my way, so. Second down, less than yard. And it will be a second in inches. All Phillipsburg really needs to do is just run a little bit more and they will have a first down. No reason to get risky here. There's the snap, looking for a throw. Not able to wrap it up, it'll be dropped. And that'll set up a third in inches. I don't know why you wouldn't just run it there. I mean, I'd agree with you more. Just to run, it'll get him out of there, but. I mean, we're not a team to, excuse me, they're not a team to usually make decisions like that as we haven't seen it throughout this game. Takes a snap, rushes in himself, does get the first down, and a little bit more. And that'll move the sticks. I mean, I don't know why you would go for a pass there. There's no real reason. Even though he was wide open, don't get me wrong. He didn't catch it. Just run it like that. Takes a snap. Looking for a pass down the field. Lot of pressure. Little dink there for what looks to be a gain of five. And a big throw there. Looked like what Matt calls a little bit of WWE action there. Only difference is this isn't fake. <laughs> Second and six. Takes a snap, hands it off. Gain of what looks to be about one will set up a second Looks like a third and four. Third and four. There's the snap, looking for a pass. Was it a first down? They're going to measure it yet again. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't really look like a first down to me. And looks like I was just about right. Nope, it is a first down. They will give it to him. So that's a first down for Phillipsburg. Five minutes, 46 seconds left on the clock. Takes a snap, runs it himself. Whistle comes out, the flag. False start on the offense. They will lose some yards. And it'll be a first and 15. This is probably the best chance Hills has 
to close out the game. They just need to play effectively. Staggered, takes the snap, looking for a pass. Lot of pressure, almost wrapped up, gets taken down. That's Joe Rondi. We'll set up a second and 16, and I mean, come on, I'm gonna say it here. If Hills wins, in my personal opinion, it's Joe Rondi MVP. I would agree with you there. Just an incredible performance throughout the entirety of this game. Staggered, takes the snap, looking for a pass, rolling out right. Chucks it away. Almost caught, but he dropped it. We'll set up a third and 16. And I mean, let's talk about what he's done tonight. Multiple tackles in clutch positions. Sacks. And pretty much his run defense has been on point. From the beginning of the game to the end of the game, or pretty much until now, he's been on fire tonight. I mean, you really couldn't ask for any more. Staggered, takes the snap, looking for a pass. Rolling out, keeps it. We'll get taken down. It'll set up a fourth and 10. Actually sets up a fourth and 11 and. Timeout. And that'll be a timeout Phillipsburg and this most likely if Phillipsburg is not able to able to convert this they might not see the offensive side of the field again for the rest of this game. Luca tell us what the defense needs to do to shut this game out. Well this Hills defense needs to get around this Phillipsburg offensive line and try and get to the quarterback. However, if they cannot get to the quarterback and he's able to hand it off or throw a pass, we need coverage on everyone possible. Just anything you can ask for from a defense, Hills needs to do right now. And we've seen them do it before, so we definitely see that they can potentially and hopefully do it now. Staggered. Gets a snap, rolling out left, looking for a pass. It's up. Intercepted! It's Christian Puntalillo! So, just like that, Christian Puntalillo on lockdown. And they might have called it back. No, they didn't. Sharky's on the field. Oh, no. It's an interception. Trust me. And Christian Puntalillo comes up clutch. And that one play could have locked down this entire game. And with every second ticking away, Phillipsburg loses more and more chances to turn this game around. Hills just needs to waste as much time as possible. Hayek at quarterback, runs it himself. Gain of a couple more, does not get a first down. <clears throat> we 
will set up a third and four. And just like that, three minutes left on the clock. With time still ticking away. Sharkey, in at quarterback, tries to get the defense to jump. Takes the snap, throws it to Njoku. That's a first down. Was forced out of bounds, so that will stop the clock. But that is a first down that can easily restart the clock here. Two minutes, 34 seconds left. Sharkey in the pocket. Tries to get the defense to jump. Puntalillo and Haig out wide right. Nojoku alone on the left. Takes a snap, hands it off. Keeps it himself actually. Tries to run down the right side, gains about two. We'll set up a second and seven. And two minutes, 15 seconds left on the clock. And you know, at this point, I'm gonna say, I think Hills has come away with it. I think they've pretty much, with two minutes now on the clock, I think they've done it. I think the state championship is coming home. And a timeout is called by Wayne Hills with a minute 49 on the clock. And at this point, what Hills needs to do is they need to avoid all penalties and don't turn the ball over. Just keep control of it. Last couple, last barely a minute of the game left. Couple more seconds and you're state champions. I mean, they can't, they don't really need to do any more than what you just said. Avoid penalties and don't turn the ball over. It's simple, really. But we've seen Hills with some foolish penalties. But again, that shouldn't really stop them. The key factor here is not turning over the ball. If they can keep this ball, get a few first downs, maybe even score, but that's not necessary but all they need to do is just keep control of this ball and that state championship is coming home with us. Well, a very easy process, but they have to get to that point first. All they gotta do is use a couple more seconds and it should be coming home, but we'll see it happen. Hayek takes the snap, runs it himself, down the right side, able to break away for a couple more yards. Gets to about third and three. Minute 40 on the clock. Timeout, Phillipsburg. And Phillipsburg calls a timeout with a minute 40 on the clock. Hills is up 35 to 21. And at this point, very simply, Hills is going to walk away with it. I don't think at this point Phillipsburg has a chance to really come back. And at this point, Hills has locked it down. They've got it. I mean, I will agree with you on that one that Hills has this one in the bag, but it can truly be confirmed once and if they get this first down on this play. Third 
It's Hayek. I'm sorry, it's Sharkey in a quarterback. Runs it with Abita. Does he get the first down? It does look like it to me. Minute 33 on the clock. He does get the first down. And here's the Gatorade dump on Coach Demikoff. And Hills will be bringing another state championship home to Wayne Hills. And Hills will take a knee to run out the rest of the clock. Delay again. Red. And Hills will actually draw a delay of game penalty. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Ridiculous. <laughs> Well, either way, Hills knows they pretty much have it on lock. I think that's guaranteed at this point. There's the knee. Clock will run yet again. And there's the second dump. Now it's Sharky in the pocket, just gonna take another knee to wrap this game up. So, you can see on the sidelines the excitement with Hills as the game is over and Wayne Hills will be bringing back the state title for the second time in four years. And this game is one that will go down in the books. An incredible game by both teams, but Hills coming out on top. What an incredible game. And you know, this was a very, very close game that could have gone in either team's favor. You can make a very good argument that Phillipsburg could have won this game just as much as you could have said that Hills could have won this game. And in the end, it came down to just gameplay. It just came down to the way that Hills was able to execute in the second half, and they were able to take it away. I mean... Exactly what you just said. Gameplay was what took over for both of these teams. Hills, with their gameplay getting even better. Phillipsburg getting a bit sloppy towards the end. But they tried to come back and recover. But Hills, Hills' takeover was just too much for them to handle. Giving Hills the lead by two touchdowns and sealing the game. Well, not only just sealing the game, but sealing the game away in probably one of the greatest ways that you can ever see. And honestly, what an accomplishment for this Wayne Hills team. You could not be more proud. They fought through so much to get here. They went to Utah against one of the best teams in the country and lost. Came back to New Jersey, beat Wayne Valley, beat Old Japan who had sent them out the previous year, went all the way to the playoffs, beat Morris Hills, beat Morris Holes, beat Old Japan again in the sectional finals, and then made it all the way to the state championship and took it away. I mean, yeah, they had such an incredible season. 
even even with those wins, there were so many incredible performances by not only this team, but I mean not only players, but this whole team. This, every single member of this team who played in these games is a contributing effort to this team getting to the state championship. Everyone on this team should be grateful for what they accomplished. And you know, this senior year for Hills, you know, I've watched it all four years. I've been here all four years. I played for it one year, left and then came here. And honestly, you know, looking down on it now as a previous player that I played with those guys, I worked with those guys. And honestly, they deserve this 100%. They worked so hard to get here. Nobody, and I'm telling you, nobody can deny that. They are some of the hardest workers in this state. This was their end game. This was their goal. And they worked to get here, and they made it. That's what matters, is that they did it. And now they are champions. I mean, it is absolutely deserving. This Wayne Hills team gave more than their all, and they got what they were shooting for. Literally couldn't have asked for any more throughout this entire U season. And now, for the last time, for me at least, for the football program, this is Dylan Orn King and Luca Yanuzzi signing off for now.